Hi, and welcome to the Lehigh Valley Church online service. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you enjoy the worship songs and the lessons that's been prepared. And please remember to like and share the video with your friends and family. Enjoy. Good morning, and thank you for tuning in to Virtual Church this morning. My name is Riley Pickrell, and I get to lead our campus ministry here in the Lehigh Valley Church. Um, if you've been tuning in with us recently, we've been working through the book of Hebrews in a new series called Connected. And we've been striving to glean principles from this group, this book, uh, to learn how we can connect better with God and with each other, especially during times when the future seems fairly uncertain. Uh, so without further ado, if you'd like to get your Bibles out, please turn over to Hebrews chapter 5, and I'm going to go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this morning, an opportunity that we get to come before you and praise you. God, you are sovereign and in control, and God, even during times when the world seems fairly crazy, God, we get to trust that you're unchanging, that you don't change, and that your will will prevail in the end, so long as we trust you and trust your word. 
I pray for this morning that, Father, I can deliver the word uh, fairly well, um, and that, God, we can um, all just be in awe of, of your word, and, and, Lord, just the fact that you love us enough to, uh, Lord, just to go out of your way to make circumstances that we can come to know you. I love you, Father. I ask all this in your name. Amen. So, if you're turning over to Hebrews chapter 5, please go to verse 11, and I'm going to start reading there. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you are no longer trying to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant, is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So, in the previous verses, the author of Hebrews, he had just finished, finished up explaining the significance of Jesus in his relation to Melchizedek, saying basically that Jesus is our new high priest. He goes to God to basically uh, plead on our behalf, um, but also he's a better high priest because he's the high priest for all time after his one sacrifice. So, after he gets done explaining that, the author then goes on to tell them that these things are hard to understand. But it's not hard to understand because of the content. It's hard to understand because they have no longer tried to understand. Uh, they've gotten to a place where well, once they were striving to understand, now they have stopped caring in some ways. And the desire to learn about who Jesus was and what he did was no longer with these people. They have stopped trying. Now, I believe very deeply that if you put genuine effort into reading the Bible and your times with God, you will always walk away fairly amazed. Uh, the Bible is just full with meaning and history and practical wisdom. Not to mention uh, going through changing life stages and uh, being in a different place in life, you, you, you start to see the Bible differently. I guarantee when one day, if, uh, if I have a family, the scriptures that talk about God being my father, I'm going to see it a little bit differently than I do now being uh, just out of college, single guy, just kind of doing my thing. But uh, I can remember a time back when I was in college when I started to, to kind of understand how scripture can uh, really be um, kind of amazing. I grew up going to church. Uh, the Bible was always kind of there, but it was never really that impressive. I remember a time my buddy was showing me this book called From Shadow to Reality. It was by this guy named John Oakes. And it talked about the relations from uh, about the Old Testament and the New Testament and how they were connected. And, and my mind was blown as he told me all these things about uh, the old feasts and the Passover and even just the old tabernacle and how they all connected and, and we're really pointing to something better, which is going to be in Jesus. But when you strive to understand Scripture, um, it's, always, it's always an amazing thing. You come away from it fairly changed. Um, to that point, he goes on in verse 12. He also says, In fact, by this time you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word. And, you know, I, I fully believe that each of us are called to be teachers to some extent. If you don't feel like you can be a teacher, I guarantee when I, when I first became a Christian, I did not think I would ever be preaching. This is not something I ever asked for, but somebody came uh, and asked if I could do it, and now it's, it's just kind of happening. I believe at some point, everybody can teach to some extent, and this is what the author is calling the people in Hebrews to. But the problem here, it really is the root, is that they have stopped trying to learn. Uh, the issue of the church being addressed isn't that they're slow or thick-headed, but they just lost their passion, the passion that they had from the beginning. The willingness to learn or to relearn is a necessary ingredient if you want to become mature. Um, one of my favorite football players of all time, his name was Peyton Manning, fairly well-known guy. Before he did State Farm commercials, he was a football player, for those people that don't know that. But he, uh, back in 2011, actually underwent uh, an injury where he had to go and get back surgery. 
and he spent the whole season in 2011 out for back surgery. Um, and then after that, he actually had to go back uh, because the surgery left him fairly weak. Even some articles say that he could hardly even throw a dart at a dartboard to get it to stick, that his body was so weak. So he underwent a lot of training, um, and at some point, he went and actually joined up with his old college coach, uh, whose name is uh, David Cutcliffe, um, and started retraining for the NFL, and they started with the bare basics. And he started from ground zero, uh, which basically means he started with just even learning how to hold the football correctly. Um, and from there, he, he progressed, he started to to get much better, and over and over a period of months, he drastically improved. Um, he even got to the point where he felt confident that he could play in the NFL once again. But the Colts chose not to take him, and he was picked up by the Broncos. And for his final four seasons playing with the Broncos, he actually took them to the Super Bowl to win the Super Bowl, and had four record-breaking seasons. And he said in a late in, in an interview after he was done playing that he attributed much of his success to going back and relearning the basics of the game. The mindset to always want to learn and relearn is something that will take us far and allow God to use us in, in ways probably we wouldn't expect. But let's keep going in the passage into Hebrews 6 verse 1. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not again laying the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, Instructions about the cleansing rites, laying out of hands, the res uh, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, to, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they, were cru they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain will often, or often falling on it, and that produces crop used by those for whom it is farmed receives a blessing from God. But the land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Once you have been taught the basics, or once you have been taught the basics, I think the, what the author is trying to say here is we must move on. Uh, there are basics to being a Christian. There are fundamentals that we must learn. And once moved, or once there, we can move on to other things. Let the Bible define salvation and the basic tenets of a Christian life, which basically are just built on love, being compassionate, and, uh, and having a daily walk with God. I think that you know, many, many people today, we spend a little bit too much time getting caught in the weeds talking about faith and grace and repentance and baptisms. And oftentimes we're explaining these things to other Christians in the way that we see them. While this is happening, I have a feeling that a lot of people are out there who are lost. Uh, there's not really an appeal to be a Christian when most of the talk going on is, is confusing and full of just theoretical rhetoric and uh, while this is happening, there is a lost world that we're not paying attention to. So if you're watching today, if you're not sure what the elementary teachings are that we read of in Scripture, please uh, don't be afraid to click the link below. Uh, please reach out to us. We would love to meet you um, and help you try to figure these things out. But as you keep going on in uh, verse 10, God is not unjust, and He will not forget your work. And the love of those shown... Uh, and the love that you have shown to him as you have helped his people and continue to help him, them. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end, so that you hope, or what you hope for may be realized. We do not want you to become lazy, uh, but to imitate those through, who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Um, and we see in the scripture here, he's, he's saying that in the beginning, they were doing the right things. They were, they were doing everything correct. But over time, they drifted, and, and he wants to see them have that same diligence. And I think there's a great principle to be gleaned from these scriptures. And, and the principle is this. If you are not growing, you're dying. There's a great analogy used for this. You can imagine a river, and you can imagine a fish swimming upstream against the current with the river. 
Um, if that fish stops, uh, what happens to him? He starts flowing with the river. He starts losing ground that he's gained. When it comes to our spiritual lives, if we are not growing and actively maturing, we're losing ground. Where there's no plateau, there's no space we can be at where we're just chilling. If we're not doing anything, we're actually regressing. Um, some people may know I play a little bit of guitar. About three years ago, I went and bought it with my best friend. And to be very honest, I did the classic thing you always do with a guitar. You buy it, you play it for about two months, then you put it in the corner of your room, and you never play it again. And, and you know, I would go back to it every now and then. I'd, I'd hear a John Denver song, or I'd hear a Brad Paisley song on the radio. I'd want to learn it or something like that. But never consistently. It was really just a piece of furniture sitting in my room, and it was decoration. But uh, something you do notice you know, on the time, the times I would go and pick up the old six string and want to play it again, is that I couldn't play the same. Most of the chords I would try to do, I would remember where to put my fingers, but I couldn't really get them in the speed that I would if I was playing more consistently. To boot, I would lose the calluses. If you don't know this, if you're a guitar player, uh, you need calluses on your fingers. Um, if you don't have those, it's, it just makes it difficult to play. It hurts your hands and, and it just makes things awful. But if you do not consistently play the guitar and you just use it every now and then, you don't really progress. And in fact, the more it sits, really the more ground you're going to have to make up when you pick it up again. It's like that with our faith. You know, if we want to be transformed, we have to actively be seeking God and His Word to be transformed. We can't stay in one spot. I think as humans, you know, we, we're always being shaped to some extent. In Romans 12, it says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Rather, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I think the reality is, if, if we're not allowing God to be the master potter who's molding and shaping us, there is something out there that's going to be molding and shaping us. We're going to be transformed either way, and we get to choose whether or not we're going to let it be God and His Word, or let it be social media, things we watch on TV, uh, podcasts or speakers whose opinions on matters sound good to us, but if we do not share them up with Scripture and with the Bible, uh, we're letting the world mold us in a way that God does not see fit. So we can either choose to consciously understand how these things shape us, or just unconsciously let them shape us. And that's the reality of it. But if you're not choosing to grow, ultimately you are dying. How can we apply this, though? I think... Going to verse 10, it's, we can see how we can apply it. So if you're in a spot that you don't know if you're growing or you don't know if you're maturing in your faith, uh, then you want to. Here's how. In verse 10, God says, or it says, God is not unjust. You will not forget your work and the love that you've shown him as you've helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show the same diligence till the very end so that your hope may be fully realized. And I think the reality is, if you want to grow and you don't feel like you are, go back to what you were doing in the beginning. You never outgrow your need for quiet times, your need for prayer, um, even just your need to serve people. Those things are necessary no matter if you're one day old as a Christian or 40 years old as a Christian. Those things always will apply. For me, it's kind of easy. If I want to serve somebody, I get to, I get to serve campus students. I buy them food, they are happy. It's very simple. but. These things you don't outgrow. And if you want to grow in your faith, just go back to the basics. What you were doing in the beginning and continue in those things. If you want to be a great runner, you got to go run. Don't overthink it. I think the, best, the biggest thing we do is we overthink these things. Or we get guilty because we've gotten to a spot where we don't feel confident in our faith. Don't overthink it. Just go back to the basics. Keep it simple. Um, this week for our Connect Together Charge, uh, we want uh, everyone to be teachers. Um, the challenge this week is to go out with somebody if you feel comfortable um, and share your faith. Go to a park, go to a public place, um, go to a restaurant. It doesn't matter. But go and share your faith with somebody in the hopes that you can teach them. And if you don't feel comfortable doing it in person, just do it virtually. Get on a Zoom call with somebody, and while you're on that Zoom call, pray, and then each of you text somebody that you're trying to share your faith with or a friend, or a family member, it doesn't matter who it is. But with that, that's the end of the lesson, and I hope everyone has a great Sunday.
Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All thy have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All thy have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine and ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all thy have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness lord to me. Good morning, Lehigh Valley Church. I'm James. This is my beautiful wife, Paula, and we're thankful to be able to share with you the community message this morning. And my wife would like to start off by uh, sharing a scripture. Good morning. If you can turn your Bibles to Psalms 121. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. 
The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your going and your coming, both now and forevermore. This scripture uh, means a lot to me. It was uh, read to me when I was in sixth grade, um, and I was going through a lot in school. Um, my mom shared it uh, with me. Um, I was raised in uh, inner city, um, Brooklyn. Uh, at the time, I'd been um, going through a lot with uh, fighting in school and being bullied, more or less, um, because I, I looked different, I sounded different than the other kids I was going to school with. And um, so my mom felt like it would be a source of, um, you know, help for me. And it definitely was. As you know, everything growing up, um, my mom always felt like, you know, the Bible, God, is always a, a source of strength, which it always has been. And I, uh, I felt that way throughout growing up. So um, during this uh, COVID time and the time with the, the, these times with the violence going on and such, um, I, we've had the opportunity to speak with um, my family in Brooklyn um, on Zoom. And this uh, situation came, this question came up, what, what uh, scriptures are uh, meaningful to, to us at this time? And I brought up this scripture, my, and I told my mom how thankful I was that it's still at this uh, time at this time in my life still is so important to me. And she said, well, that's interesting because um, it was brought to her by her mom. And um, so uh, I've since shared it with my, my kids and um, and I just felt like it was uh, important to, to share it with everyone else. I, it's simple, um, it's easy, uh, and it's, you know, one of the, I don't know, um, I don't know, I just love the scripture and I felt like it would, it's always a source of comfort to me and I feel like it should be, a, you know, a source, a source as God is um, and the Bible has always been a comfort to me, should be a comfort to everyone else. Amen. And as I uh, reflect on this, uh, it makes me think of Paul, again, just like Paul has shared, current situations that are going on. Um, and I lost a dear friend to me uh, during this time and it's just a lot of things that you know uh, have me concerned um, you know is this period of COVID will it uh, finally pass uh, job situations that are going on now uh, or things are going to get worse am I going to be out of work and things of uh, being able to help put food on the table um, you know, and also, you know, monthly we meet together as parents with the other parents and, you know, not uh, exacerbating our children. So a lot of pressures, you know, are there. And um, I, I just know uh, God ha has our backs. He definitely protects us. And will not give us too much that, 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 that we can't handle. Um, I, I'm just uh, thankful for him going to the cross uh, for us, Lord. Um, I'm just thankful for that. And as we're about to take the bread and the juice, to remember in Isaiah 53, verse 5, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our inequities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to allow us to be able to share. Mm -hmm. uh, just thank you for the church. Uh, thank you for friends and family, Lord. Continue to pray for uh, all of us during these uh, tough times, Lord. And I know, Lord, that we will get through this, Lord. Just thank you so much for your love as we pray all the things in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen.
This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I This is the air I Amen. That concludes the worship portion of our service today. At this point, we will take up our weekly contribution and then have our announcements. Uh, as always, there are three ways to give. You can give online at lehighvalleychurch.com. You can text to give, or you can do as a church app. And with that, we will pray for our giving. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you that you are a God that continues to meet our needs. God, we pray that we can give back to you financially out of a heart of gratitude and generosity, Father, and that you can use this money that we are giving now, Father, and use it to change many lives across the Lehigh Valley. I love you, and I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So a few announcements is upcoming worship Sunday. This Sunday is July 5th. Uh, we will have Facebook and YouTube live streaming at 1030 a.m. Uh, we will discuss as Lehi is now in green at midweek this July. We will discuss our plan moving forward for slowly re-engaging meeting. Um, but this Sunday, July 5th, will be live streamed um, and we will discuss our timeline for meeting back in person uh, at midweek July 1st. This Wednesday, we will have our fourth and final part in the uh, Culture, Race, and the Kingdom workshop. And the Zoom room for that will open at 7.30 p.m. Midweek will start promptly at 8 p.m. We will have our community life groups this Friday, many of whom are beginning to meet in person, uh, and others are still meeting virtually. If you would like information about which group best fits your needs, please email info at lehighvalleychurch.com. 
Uh, we do encourage those who are able and comfortable as soon as service ends today to meet up for post-worship fellowship and to do a social distance, bring your own picnic, to meet at a park, stay six foot separation from each other, and just enjoy fellowshipping in person. Uh, for those that are not able or comfortable meeting in person yet, as soon as worship ends, we will open a Zoom room for virtual fellowship. The link is in the chat right now. Uh, and then finally, we do have some prayer requests. Please continue to pray for Cynthia Winston in her continued battle with uh, cancer, uh, for continued healing and the treatment to continue working. And then continue to pray for a seer as they are figuring out his new medication regimen uh, so that his body can accept the kidney transplant. With that, that is all the requests we have for today. Please have an incredible week. God bless, and I will see you guys Wednesday.